Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Evgeny. Greetings, fellow human person beings. Okay. My name is Argent. Okay. Uh, also joining us is Grace. Hello. <laughs> My name is Grace. Gator girl. Yes, yes, match my vibe. Also joining us is Ala. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rasar. I don't know what we're doing here. Coward. They're pretending to be aliens. Is that's what they're trying to do? Oh, was that what I was doing? Okay. I have no idea. That's the best <laughs> thing that I can think of. That you're like, oh, greetings, Earthlings. Ah, yes. No, I was, I was just vibing. God, well, I guess I'm glad I'm here because who knows what the hell the intro would have been if you ran the show today. Yes. <laughs> um, and I'm Chaos. And what we're going to talk about today is we are going to talk about the space age of the Cosmere because, again, Ooh. we are biding time before Storm Life 5. So we got to talk about predictions. And you know what? You guys liked the Mistborn Era 3 predictions. So we're going to talk about the space age now. <laughs> And even even further out. Even further out. But, you know, kind of on our minds, given the secret projects and and things. Uh, so, two things. One, this might be two episodes. Uh, maybe two shorter episodes or one longer episode. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll find out how much we blab for. Did we just record a 30-minute Patreon <laughs> exclusive before doing this? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? Um, is, is this uh, our Patreon advertisement for the for yeah, this yeah. Episode? So go to Patreon, <laughs> patreoncom slash 17 chart you, for a dollar a month, and you can get sometimes some interesting outtakes, uh, so, some weird stuff. I don't know how many people are gonna like it, but it's there, and it's thirty minutes. Um, and two, we will have spoilers up through the Cosmere, all the secret projects, and I we, we have to have Ember Dark sample chapters on the table for this one. Uh, like, we, ju we just have to. Sorry. So, uh, if you want to avoid that, I, I think this episode might not be for you because it's it's you're, we're going to be going back and forth all the time. Come, come back in a year where this will be both safe for you and also a little outdated. <laughs> we, yeah, totally outdated because we might, cause we might have matter. all of Ember Dark by that yeah, point. Right, so. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that, that's why we have to do it now so we we can get our yeah. speculation for the space age before we know too much. Yeah. Easy. When is Ember Dark supposed to release? Anyway? Like next Where's summer. No? Next summer-ish. Oh, oh, okay. So we don't have a date yet. No, there's no date. There's no date. I, I think, think I, I think we assume like I think we assume Q1 or Q2 of next year. Oh no, I thought it was summer. I thought for sure it was mid mid 2025. Well, that's Q2. But I would say July would be completely <laughs> reasonable. Okay. Anyway, oh, doesn't yeah. matter. Okay, doesn't sure. matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Um cool. So in this I want to. I want to. I want to do a show tell. I want to oh, do a show tell. Okay, sorry. Okay. Ooh, okay, so I was. I was. I was. I. I could have warned you, but I thought it'd be funnier if I don't. <laughs> um, I. I went to a conference last week. Um, you did a developer. Uh, a developers conference called GopherCon, and one of the things about GopherCon, so it's it's for the programming language Go, uh, but okay. as as you might imagine, their mascot is a gopher. Which is okay. this like cute little animal beastie thing? Uh, here is for those of you who are looking at the. Let me just make sure there's no like incriminating information here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's really annoying if I have to edit it out in post. Maybe you know? maybe I'll just hide my. Although you you know my name, but I'll hide my company for fun. That's um, probably for the best. So so this is That's this is what really the badge cute, looks like actually. So Holy it has crap. a lot of. Like, <laughs> A lot of cute golfers, and and that's, that's kind of that's a, like a great. community, a community thing for like the Go developers community. Like, uh, you can go online and make your own like gopher avatar uh, that you can wear on mm. your badges and stuff. Sure, uh, there were these like really cute. Um, they look so derpy. <laughs> they, they all look so derpy. Uh, this is like a keychain thing that they were hang, hanging out uh, at, a, at a NeuroSpicy event, and I thought I'd pick one as an ally. But the reason I'm talking about this, uh, I'm also wearing a, a GopherCon t-shirt, by the way. The reason I'm talking about it is because uh, I got so many stickers at this convention, and here is one of them, which is 
uh, Chicago style hot dog, but with a gopher. And it's facing in into your background. And right. it's facing into my background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is this is not our first rodeo. We know how these things work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, my shirt also faces also, yeah, into no, the background. I, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to mention that. <laughs> no, fully aware. Okay, uh, cool. But, but my favorite thing, well, my, my, my second favorite thing is this Chicago style deep dish pizza with a gopher nice. coming out of it, which I dish, absolutely love. I like it. Deep dish is nice. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, it was but- just like, is this why people are making jokes about Chicago pizza? Because it looks like this? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I learned something new today. That's yeah, good. <laughs> there, there is a reason we call it a pie. Yeah, it's good. Uh, so, but my favorite thing is, so this is from Capital One, actually, which is a bank. Okay. Um, All right. Interesting. They had t-shirts with this on them. I didn't manage to snag one. Oh, uh, because I was one. too slow. They they ran out. Okay. But it was a t-shirt with a with a big gopher in a deep dish. But they, they were also branded with like Capital One on them. So I probably mm-hmm. less, I don't know fun. if I Yeah. Yeah. But I but I think I think this is incredibly cute and adorable. And it I is adorable it. and very derpy. <laughs> yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They 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 all are. They all are. So that's my show and tell. Now we can talk about the future of the Cosmere, where okay. to our knowledge, there are no gophers. <sighs> Look, I, I, no I will I will just say the talking rat in Tress, I, 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 <gasps> like Close. legitimately, this is immediately off topic completely <laughs> threw me off. I was like, oh yeah, why, why? <laughs> like the genre savvy of fairy tales did not crock for me at all. I'm just too in the Cosmere road. It's like, when are there talking animals in the Cosmere? Is it a Chondra? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it a Chondra? How is it a Chondra? That doesn't make any sense. And like, I oh, just yeah, no, could I, not I, get I went, over that the entire time. I, when I was betaing Tress, my thought was, oh, am I going to need to flag this as like a, a continuity thing? Because they there can be no talking animal like how would that even work oh maybe oh maybe it's a breath thing like maybe you can you know <laughs> yeah uplift. it's like an awakened dead squirrel but yeah yeah yeah, 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 but, yeah, but, not, yeah. but not dead yeah, yeah but it's awakened yeah yeah they, they gave yeah. it sentience yeah yeah anyway uh <laughs> that that, that really you know how, how they managed to turn a person into a rat with like a on doors door. overpowered. <laughs> you don't ask doors questions. Overpowered. <laughs> don't ask questions about such things. It's just ah, there's maybe an Aeon that well, I guess yeah. does that. I guess with enough one, mods. One day, one day we'll we'll do an episode where we'll talk about Aeon Door and just how stupidly broken it is. Yep. Cause... True. Ooh, yeah. But not maybe, today. Yeah, because we're not going to be able to reread Elantris before Stormlight Five to bide our time for that. That's that's later. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to talk about today, <laughs> Jesus, uh, is we are going to talk starting about the greater Cosmere war. And we're going to talk about factions. Mm-hmm. Where are the people that we all know, all the planets, who are they allied with? Because we are going to have a Roshar versus Skadriel conflict. That is very obvious from the Ember Dark uh, previews that that's that's what's happening here. I think in Ember Dark time, it's clearly like a Cold War type thing, right? Yeah. Just like a space, a galactic it's, it's, it's Cold like War. In, like. in all the in all the like far future books, we've had like Six of the Dusks and Ember Dark and Sunlit Men. They've all like been in like this Cold War state. Mm-hmm. So I I assume that whatever if if the war goes hot, then that's going to be the subject of Era Four Mistborn. Yeah, yeah, I think so that's it, exactly where it. it and then yeah. we get the excitement and all the guns start shooting. Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of what I think uh, about the, the state of the war that, that we were not. May, maybe there's going to be like skirmishes and stuff before Mistborn Air 4. Like maybe, maybe there's been like I, a few I, conflicts. I am sure there will be a lot of like. Oh, this group of, of either Skadrians or Rosharans that are not officially affiliated with the Rosharan government or the Skadrian government yes. are like doing like little clashes, like guerrilla warfare, like a little uh, kind of under the table skullduggery shenanigans. And then they get caught and, and their respective governments like, 
we don't know. That's the time tellers, man. That's the time teller. They are not a government organization. Well, it wouldn't be the time tellers because they're still like affiliated with like they they have an official place in in that. But, you know, governments are going to be throwing these people under the bus left and right. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe like proxy wars. If there's like a planet where two factions on the planet are already fighting, it's like, oops, we we just gave these uh this faction that happens to be with us and against this other faction that happens to be working with the Rosharin's guns like but we follow all of the international or er, intercosmere codes of trade yeah. we gave them guns even I though just, the just, people there yep i i hate it when when my guns fall off the back of the truck when i am yeah, on a backwater country <sighs> and i just happen to be driving by the faction that I is just accidentally to me. pushed them down to the planet like i, I like just, i get thrust for the pushing the guns you fell. can't sorry you can't trust like they don't they don't make trucks like they used to anymore like your yeah. guns just constantly fall off of them back in the cyberpunk era it was so much better man like you know it's just yeah, and it's now just not the same. Guns falling off fighter jets, like falling off the truck box. Yeah, they they no, just it's... all focus on spaceships and not about trucks. You yeah. never get a good That's truck. The problem. Yeah. We we forgot where we came from. We it's forgot really the electric vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> but I definitely think there'll be proxy wars. I imagine we could have proxy wars in places that you know we've seen. Like we don't really know. Mm what's going on with cell and Nalthus. And I think that's exactly what this, what we're going to talk about here. What, what, what's going on yeah. with them. Mm-hmm. But like, I would not be surprised if there's like a pretty considerable proxy conflict on either of those places. Right. And maybe, maybe I it's actually, solidified by the time, you know, we're, you know, in you know I actually feel like cell and Nalthus if would be like the two worlds that would not be like drawn into drawn directly into the conflict. Because, yeah. like, for example, we, we know that Nalfis is exporting, like, awakened met, metal yeah. mines. Because we've seen them, mm-hmm. like, in pretty much, like, every Space Age story. Maybe, like, except for Yumi, because it has so little to do with, like, actual bigger picture. But, mm-hmm. like, every time we hear about spaceships, we hear about awakened metal mines. So, I'm going to disagree slightly. Because I don't think we know that they are export like... Uh, awakened metal mines have two components to them yeah they have the awakening and they have the metal mind okay f- fair enough fair enough and, and anyone so can this, get breath right like there can anyone be... can get breath uh the oh, father machine on actually. komashi uh father machine on komashi was not awakened with with breath right and so awakened metal mines might have nothing to do with nalthus whatsoever i i okay. think they yeah, do that's... But it could be Scadrians like having figured out a way either with the metallic arts or with some other magic system that they found on some, you know, backwater sure. country out there where they have figured out how to awaken metal mines. Yeah. No, I, I do generally think that planets with a shard in residence are probably in a better bargaining position in yeah. terms of the greater conflicts than like something like Threnody or first of the sun like that's true uh, threnody has other things well yeah okay oh, threnody oh. was a bad it was a bad <laughs> but yes yes no one no one wants to go conquer threnody they're like ah, you know maybe <laughs> no what uh, if you guys just stay there <laughs> yeah what if, why don't you go over there um i i just had this horrific thought that Maybe Nalthus is used as just a giant breath farm. Just a breath factory. Like a, ga- a galactic breath farm and like whoever, whatever Imperial power has it under control. Like let's say Skadriel, because if there's awakened metal mines or something, sure. And Skadriel's just like, cool, yeah, no, we're, we're just going to take all your breath there. But thankfully, endowment probably wouldn't allow that to happen, Grace. Like That's a very interesting thing here. We we don't just have the people involved, but there's also the shard politics. And like, Nelsus and also Cell with uh, like Aeon Dor, and we kind of mentioned Aeon Dor being powerful, but Nelsus has 
potentially the ability to make shard blades without spren. They potentially yeah, have like sure. the original awakened metal mines. They have the day the near statues that can fight without like really being killed. I think like along with the shard itself, I think these planets with the shards and residences have powerful enough magic that if if Nelsis wanted to try and stay neutral, they would have a better chance of that than probably anywhere else. We do also know that Nalfis has a head have a, has a bit of a head start on like yeah. Shadesmar exploration. Yeah, like <laughs> caravans and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Customs. So I will add, like to, to circle back to uh Awakened Metal Mines. Um in um, uh, Biles of the Ember Dark, chapter 11, in one of the previous, like the, the one with the crew of the dynamic. Mm -hmm. When um, Starling mm. describes the dynamic, ah, here's what, hot what she says. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or what she thinks, rather, right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Rosharan Antigraph Tech, Datrian Aethers for providing thirst and aging power, Ascadrian Composite Metal Hurl. Never mind that all three technological strains could produce their own viable starships. Uh, the dynamic, like her crew, had picked up a little here and a little there. Really, all it was missing was an awakened metal mind, but those were expensive, and Starling had never trusted them anyway. So that that actually leads me to what I actually think is going on with Nalthus, and I think they're just a really powerful economic powerhouse that's like neutral, mm -hmm. and they they sell really advanced special stuff to everyone and yeah and mm -hmm. so yeah. they people don't want to invade there because it, it might be a thing where they'll just like yeah we'll just destroy our stuff so you can't have it right yeah, like it's, it's all about the knowledge um, of creating these things that's important and there there is also probably like a thing of like force neutrality like yeah there could also be a thing where they what they produce is so like economically important to so many different factions than if you step foot on Nalfis with military intent, you're going to have like three other groups jump you. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's hand endowment, presumably. Endowment. <laughs> Probably not like and that. That, that too, yes. Let's let's not forget there is an actual god in residence. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's it's the one god that's like, hey, if race becomes a problem, he will be he dealt will with. Be dealt with. Like, so it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> endowment <laughs> endowment is yeah. no harmony. Like she's no, not, no, 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 no. But she's not she letting talks. any bygones be bygones. No. She talks big game, certainly. I, I have yet, we've yet to see her actually act on it. Yeah, true. You, true. Are, you, you are not wrong, but we have also yet to see anyone mess with Nalthus. That is, that is also true. Yeah. So, you but, know. Yeah, um, I think that's, if, if the Awakened Metal Mines are so expensive, right, I, I could see Nalthus just, they had a head start with the five scholars and like awakening stuff and making these commands and things you have, you have like God Kings with like just huge amounts of breaths. So, like that's useful for making stuff. Oh, we also have, um, the, uh, the soldiers of the sorceress. They are straight up awakened. Like constructs. Right. Sure. She did have those. Yeah, did did they specifically call them awakened? There there is a reference to like her like commanding like the breath of of life or something like that and sure. it's capitalized like it's it is like it is not like the men of golden red where mm. it is a little uncertain what's going on there like okay the sorceress's army is awakened and it's like it talks about how they have like a very specific command and like that's why they are able to mm. hinder them with uh with vines and stuff like that so yeah yeah you so know, this is kind mm -hmm. of making me wonder if like the metal mines that the awakened metal mines are are even like skadram metal mines because like maybe it's like how you know like fabrial is supposed to like become a word for all kinds of magic tech Maybe it's like if you put investiture in metal, it's just gonna get called metal mind no matter where it's from. That's so that's a really interesting thought. So I've always been confused about awakened metal mines because I thought metal was really hard to awaken. And I feel like if you actually if you literally had 
a ferrochemically charged thing, investors don't mix. Like that's that's kind of the whole thing. So I never really understood what the hell's going on with that. Like what? What does that even I mean? mean? Pre presumably, that's like the double difficulty of the thing, right? One, metal is difficult to awaken. Two, invested stuff is difficult to like awaken. And so figuring out a way to awaken a metal mine yeah. is, okay, this is, you know, some Magitech feat on the level of, I don't know, like Nightblood blood or the creation of the shard blades or the other blades. Or like it is. I guess, a I guess it is deal. kind of night bloody, isn't it? Like maybe that's mm -hmm. like a different way. They're they're starting with a metal mind. I, oh, and so this was the other thing I wanted to say, Ala. I think it's an actual metal mind. I think Brandon um, is not trying to pull fast ones on people because there's so much Magitech that I think he's going to call things what they are. You know, Fair right? Enough. Like, I, th I think that will just be confusing to a reader. Um, but then again, I'm, I do think Awakened Metal Minds are very weird. Like, I don't know how you would do that. That sounds... But I mean, I guess the Metal Minds are very... Awakened Metal Minds are very expensive, right? So, yeah. yeah. Maybe, you, maybe you it is supposed to be very hard. That's why I they're valuable. I generally love to, like, have a scene of a character interacting with an Awakened Metal yes. Mind. It's like, we've seen them in... Like, I don't even remember, do we even know if they're like sapient AI or just like regular garden variety AI? I think that's the the theory is that they're like more sapient AI. That is but, the theory. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Okay, but if they are sapient, then that makes Starling saying she doesn't trust them a little funny. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I mean, that's that's like, you know, that's like someone saying, oh, I don't I don't trust the cryptics, right? I don't trust the awakened sapient things because I know what Nightblood did. And it's like, hmm, I don't know if he's very trustworthy here. I don't know. <laughs> also, 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 as we record this in the year of our lore 2024, uh, AI is kind of a big thing. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, granted, all of this generative AI that we are dealing with is nowhere near, you know, sapiens or strong sapiens. AI. No, no, it's not. It's not. I'm not saying it is. But sentiment towards even this, we like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of backlash. Like weak, yes. weak yeah. version of, you know, not even the real AI is, okay, if people are distrusting such a low level of intelligence, of course they are going to, and like you don't need to search far for sci-fi movies where people of like course. distrust AIs or AIs go rogue Actually, do, or anything of do that. You so. think, do you think Brandon will ever go into like a story about an AI uprising in the Cosmere? Well, that could be uprising? what Nalthus so has. Point with this board. That would be, be, be oh, that would be awesome, actually. The first, the first awakened metal mind goes rogue. That would I'm be actually kind of into that. Like, That's pretty sweet. It's very plausible for Cyberpunk Mistborn to be about like awakened metal minds and the creation of AI. I, I also did just have a thought that what if Nalthus is just full of AI tech pros? <laughs> that, oh, no. really, that was a very funny image. To no. Me. <laughs> okay, but like NFTs would come out of Nalthus. Yeah, that's true. Right? That's true. Yes. Uh, the only slight differences in the use. You just need enough breath to see it. It's totally different. Breath. Yeah. Oh, you were going for that thing. I was thinking NFTs, but like the breath is the thing. But like, no, breaths are pretty fudgeable. <laughs> God. Uh, anyway, but I, I, I like. I think. Uh, a prominent sci-fi story idea is always about living things versus ai right and mm -hmm. i can definitely see that becoming a thing right like because we know investiture becomes sapient eventually right mm -hmm. so i i feel like we haven't really explored that in the cosmere we like roshar yeah the sprint are nice sometimes well like a lot of them are nice but it's not, I think it's going to be a different thing than if you like literally awaken things to sapience and then they, those sapient things trying to take over the world like that, that that's interesting. I think in a Cosmere, like 
you could just so easily write that story. Yeah, I agree. It's a good one. Uh, one thing I want to add to the Awakened Metal Mind discussion is that I think it was in Sunlit Man where um, Nomad explicitly refers to the ship's AI as an awakened steel mind. Uh, yeah, that's which, crazy. Which, which implies that there are other varieties as that's well. That's ferrochemical physical speed. Yep. Which Brandon did raffle me on when yeah, I of was course, at of course, of course he was going to raffle you of Getty. <laughs> of course. But like, yeah. What? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Like, okay. Sure, Brandon. I, I do wonder why he went for that and not... Which one is mental speed? Zinc? I think it's zinc. zinc. Yeah. That's what I asked and that's what I got raffled. Because mm. I was like, hey, I feel like it makes sense for a ship's AI to be awakened mental speed, not awakened physical speed. And he was like, suck it, nerd, get raffled. <laughs> well, do you want the ship to move fast or do you want the ship to think fast, Argent? <laughs> But what is I mean, it, it depends on what the, the awakened metal mind does and how they function, right? Like it, it's it's unclear. Yeah. You can I, I right? think you can finagle. I think you can finagle like a steel metal mind, like a physical speed metal mind to like somehow grant speed to the entire ship. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah. But but that feels more difficult and less intuitive to me than having, you know, an AI that like can think fast well and it well that that's actually an interesting point because if you have a giant steel mind and then you're tapping it how do you then store more physical speed into it? like is this like some regenerative I, I breaking think, thing like i don't know here's my pitch okay. i think that the awakened metal mines when we see them are going to kind of be more like how Tantra with different blessings, how it's like you have the personality and the blessing increases some aspect of like like the the Kandra with like oh what some Kandra have better like emotional fortitude, that yeah. sort of thing. I think it's gonna be more like I think the the there's going to be some base of like awakened metal minds that like I, I don't necessarily think you're the awakened metal mind, the awakened steel mind is going to be tapping physical speed. If sure. That makes sense. I think maybe the physical speed will influence the what awakened metal mind's personality in some way. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. yeah. yeah that's sort of I, my pitch. It's it, like, yeah, they, they can't just be it's, tapping it's the attribute. Like, yeah. yeah. It's more like, do you want your, your awakened metal mind to focus on moving quickly and focus on speed oh okay that's an that interesting idea how we decide yeah. to do things okay i so i i see what you're saying and i like some of it uh i like the idea that okay so you have a piece of metal and it is full of investiture that is coded that is colored with a specific attribute right yeah. physical speed mental speed yep nutrition whatever <laughs> breath really yeah. you have this gasper um, yeah the awakened gasper yeah. um well the gasper so, is the fairing that uses sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 Just, yeah, yeah 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 everyone knows the fairing names right guys it's like no no one knows <laughs> um uh so so you have that and there is like a, a bucket of investiture inside that is coded to a specific attribute and then you awaken this bucket of investiture and it awakens that is you know awakening a bucket of uh physical speed investiture makes sense that it would be like it would result in a different thing than awakening a bucket of mental speed investiture right so far i am on board with that idea i think it makes sense um or alternatively you awaken an an uncoded like a like a blank bucket of investiture and you put it in steel or you put it in a zinc and you and you get something different like both of these i'm okay with i like what i am having more difficulty with is what does it mean for an a for 
let's not even call it an AI, call it a, although I think they call it a ship's computer, but uh, what does it mean for an awakened life form to be awakened from like an investiture that is encoded with physical, like how is that different from the mental speed version of that? You know, I'm kind of wondering if maybe this is just a matter of like computer computer thinking, so to put it, operating on like the physical realm with like transistors and processors and all that. And that's that's what I worry that it is, because I think that's a really boring explanation that I don't like. Um, but yes, that's that's a possibility, right? So like my my pitch would be to think about like an awakened gold mine. And I think uh, my health, my okay. theory is essentially an awakened gold mine would not have any inherent healing capabilities. But an awakened gold mine would be good if you're trying to program a hospital computer because it has hmm. its its intent is an understanding of health and healing. It, that it makes knows it, better. it knows health. Yeah, it, and it it's like focus on how that. healing works. Yes. It's okay. focused on Maybe. Okay. Okay, I can buy that. Yeah, I can buy that. I mean, I probably can't because they're super expensive, but I can buy that. <laughs> yeah. Right, yes. Yeah. So we did start to do this with like how Nalfians yeah. probably sell this for a ton. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, yeah, I can I can get on board with this. I don't really understand. So that this, that means like that this awakened steel mind is like influenced and understands speed or... I would say it's focused around speed. So yep. maybe may, may, for for me, Grace, it's maybe mm -hmm. not necessarily understanding health, but like whatever command it's given, it's like filtered through that lens yeah. of that I want to heal things type thing. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, like I guess. The, the spiritual identity started with physical speed. Yeah. And the way I think of it, which is a little bit niche, uh, but it makes sense to me, is in, in the concept of machine learning, uh, you, you, we are, I, I think we are potentially looking at uh, different uh, AIs trained on different data sets with different mm -hmm. models, right? So you have a, a bunch of data that is about the um you know the the uh, locomotion and uh newtonian physics uh sure. and you know sure, physical sure, motion sure, sure. physical speed <laughs> equations math integral like things versus, like that versus like health versus yeah, a stuff. bunch of health data yeah sure. medical data sure yeah yeah. Maybe. yeah i like that i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna roll with it and and go as far as it can take me yeah that's that's, that's very interesting with the awakened metal minds um from a more political perspective, right, that that could mean that there's a trade relationship between like Skadriel and Nalthus, right? Like they're they're lending certain like metal mines and the Nalthians are adding in the extra, the, you know, the special breath command <laughs> stuff to make it into a, a ship's yeah. AI, right? But, I, was, I was kind of imagining like the Skadrians show up on Nalthus and are like, here's a, a a box of metal mines. Please awaken. Also, here's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, and it, it's, it is kind of interesting because I do think we usually associate Nalthus more with like Rashar and stuff, right? Yeah, the only Nalthus characters we've seen on other planets have been on Rashar. Yeah. We talk about Nightblood or Azure, not Vivenna talks about Nightblood being like a criminal and she's hunting him for a bounty. I wonder if like, for all we know, the Roshorns could refuse to give Nightblood up and that completely sours the relationship. If, Essentially. If, now, if Nightblood is something they don't want on the plan on another planet. Mm. Possibly, Basher yeah. screwed it all up. He screwed up all the... I mean, that that's very on brand for him, honestly. Oh. <laughs> 
he I mean, causes I, an even I, bigger many more <laughs> well done jack i blame i blame shashara more than i blame him that's but, true but, but like he didn't have to go to roshar with nightblood and give up nightblood right that's true yes <laughs> that, that's he kind didn't. of on him uh he he could have kept an eye on nightblood he just chose not to i feel like at least that's sort of the implication i got anyway chuck this super now weapon i'm kind of like wondering because, mm-hmm. like, we know, like, Azure was looking for Zahel as well, wasn't she? Maybe this isn't, like, about, like, was she or was she not? Not actively. I, I think she was like, oh, if you see him, say hi to him or whatever. Yeah, because she wanted yeah. Nightblood, right? Right. I, I do kind of wonder, like, what's what their, like, mutual relation is at this point if she is hunting down Nightblood. Who is on Roshar because of Pasher? I mean, that's a great question that I'd love the answer to for sure. Um, what happened to Vasher in Rhythm of War? It's like, I Maybe have a conversation and I'm out of here. He has, he has played his part in the plot and then promptly disappeared. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh, went poof. He is no longer part of this story. <laughs> Which Casimir world are we going to see Vasher on next? But Maybe he's in Mistborn or a free. Just, that'd, be, that'd be funny. You know. <laughs> Casually hanging Miss out. Born, it's the, I think it is too difficult for him to get the best on this born. I think we're going to see true. him on Taldane Sunday thing. Oh, Ooh, that's is good. Is he going to be eating eating ghosts? <laughs> oh, but... <laughs> ghosts. He goes to threat and he eats some shades. Great, great plan. <laughs> what could go wrong? If he can get himself a metal mind, like a universal metal mind, and like... Like he can, he can potentially convert some natural physical thing. Like he can convert heat to investiture and then eat that. What if he's already on schedule and that's what happened to Bands of Morning? He just oh, no. ate all the investiture from them. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Anyway, uh, <laughs> steer this back on track. Right, right. Climb up the cliff again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yes. I just wonder how much relationship Nalthus has with Rashar. Uh, I feel like you'd have to. Like, I really like the idea of it being like a neutral thing. That's like just a really like economic powerhouse that's not necessarily <laughs> invested in the war. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> sorry, but yeah, like it, it's just a very important economic center. So I feel like there has to be some Rasharn influence and trade deals there. I just wonder if Rosharan ships would have awakened steel mines or if they use like a spren. Yeah, I think you know? like if if those are supposed they are supposed to be on like separate tech development yeah. paths, then maybe like they're just using spren. Yeah, because like, like you we, don't need to awaken things to sapiens. You got those. But- that's easy. Yeah. We know Spren can change into devices. So, you yeah. Know, like, there's, there's yeah, it's got to be some, some kind of line there, maybe. Fabrio surge yeah. thing. Yeah. Nelthus, even though we feel like it's one of our main planets, we really don't know much about the rest of the planet outside no. Holondrin and Idris. No, absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. There's vampires I don't, I don't, somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I. <laughs> I, I like all of this stuff about them being an economic power, but it's just interesting to think about what other areas might do in the future to influence Dalthus and where they end up. Well, presumably, Haldren's still going to be the most important spot because that's where the perpendicularity is, right? With the tears, probably. So, yeah. like that, yeah. that, that, that has to be the most important place. It is interesting. To keep in mind that when Brandon talks about the Cosmere, he describes the backbone of the Cosmere as Stormlight, Mistborn, and Elantris. Yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely want to talk about Cell for sure. So, yeah. so not not Nalthus, notably. Yeah, I think it's going to be more like a side thing. They're giving tech. Endowment's doing some stuff, right? <sighs> might be might be of comparable significance to like Threnody where Threnody is important on a larger scale because shades are scary, but not a lot happens on Threnody necessarily. Maybe, yeah. That might be an okay comparison. Yeah. But I, I do, we got to talk about Cell, though, right? Like, Cell yeah. is... 
Cell is fascinating because there are three empires. We only know of two of them currently. It's a huge place. Domains. Tons of people. Giant plasma storm. Not great. Big planet. Like 1.2. Yeah, yeah, it's, standard, yeah it's big. It's big for sure. Mm-hmm. So with the giant plasma storm, that seems like they might be kind of secluded until physical realm FTL. They figure that out type thing. It's kind of, this is kind of my thought that like that's a place you would go in the physical realm, whereas other places you might go via Shadesmar. Yeah, I'm thinking like in a looking at like cell at large, it's probably one of like the most defensible places in the cosmos that's because like point. you can you can't access it through Shadesmar because there's the giant plasma storm, and you cannot. Well, even if you do access it, then the place is full of like magic demigods who yeah. are on their home ground ground where their <laughs> magics will be more powerful. Yeah. Like the sorceress was able to turn someone into a rat while on a completely different planet. Clearly I, they like, figured out how to deal with that. I, I think I think she cheats. You probably cheats. I, I, I think she is as capable in her spaceship than she is uh, like in I do still feel like I feel like it would be boring if just the capability, their capabilities on and off cell were the same. I do think like they are probably still a li- at least a little bit stronger yeah. on cell. So I don't think they are the same. I think they can make this like so. I I, I think what we are looking at here is kind of the uh, and this is going to be an odd comparison, but bear with me for a moment. The D and D wizard and sorcerer uh, kind of comparison, where a wizard. Uh, is uh, uh, like has access to incredible feats of magic, but a wizard needs preparation. Sorcerer can just chug a fireball sure. and, yeah. and we're fine. So I, I think what we are looking at something similar here where when uh, Shai transformed into uh, not Shaizan, Shaizan's on my mind because that's a subject. Shai, I think it was her Shai, I, yes. name. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Shai, Shai. Um, when, when she transformed into Shai, she has to do like Aeon map type of stuff. So like, and and I suspect that her power is going to wane uh, as time goes on. So like, I don't think on the land tree, like we, we see, uh, what's his face? Galadon in the, uh, in the DL interlude and he has to do like magical um disguise uh no not magical disguise um uh, i mean he probably does need that as well because otherwise he'd be all shiny yeah, yeah i don't so so i don't know if that's a disguise is uh uh, is what I'm I guess I don't know if we necessarily need to get off track on this just because I, I okay. do think you don't want to invade cell. That's such a bad idea. Like they, yeah, they yeah. will have so, to do so, less prep for that. They can prep what they can prepare for against an invasion. They would just have access yeah. to so much power. And they could just turn your entire army into rats. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's probably a complicated thing. Yeah, assuming that they're not invested enemies, which if you're invading another planet, they probably are. <laughs> but, you know, Though, I am also like because we were talking about like access through the phys- through yeah. the physical versus like cognitive yep. realm. Because I correct me if I'm wrong, but I do remember there being something in Chris's notes on Cell about Dor possibly becoming sapient in the future. Because like you I know that's that's, that's what like the, the land industry. or something. Is that what yeah. it was? Uh, it seems like the land is maybe becoming a little bit like sapient. Yeah. is what she says. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. That's right. I'm just kind of wondering if if they were theoretically able to like establish the communication with the door, if door was a capable of being communicated with, if that basically serves as like. How do I describe it? Like an access gate to cell. Like cell can just ask the door to let them pass, but they can lock things down in Shadesmar for for oh. intruders. Yeah, because they might yeah. have like a, a essentially a proto shard in residence. Yeah, but but conversely, 
if you have a nuke big enough to change the landscape of Sal, then like Ooh. That's a good point. Kinda kind of screwing with the people's magic there. Well, but how yeah. how like you would need to change the planet's lands like because yes you can you can mess up Aralon probably fairly i mean not fairly easily but it seems doable right um but that leaves all of the other however many magic systems there are and yeah elantrians yeah. are probably the powerhouse they probably are of the cell if you will Boo. Boo. Okay, that was, that was pretty good, actually. But boo. Boo. Oh, man. The um, mitochondria of Cell. <laughs> Can someone draw a fan art of that? And, like, just all the organelles are different cellish magic systems. <laughs> That'd be good. And yeah, the is There's the, like a little the, bone, yeah. you know, that's a little potion. Yeah. Nice. Um, but yeah, so so they're probably you know the most powerful magic users there. But there, there's got to be so many other magic systems that are, you know, maybe not overpowered, but on a comparable power level to other magics in the Cosmere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have like just like at least four of them in just Elantris alone. I, I think the issue is is if you have physical realm FTL, you probably can, you know launch like a big projectile and just bombard the planet right like that 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 doesn't seem that hard once you can i don't know like you 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 can probably you know do lots of things to hurt we figure out what shattered the shattered planes yeah use that oh easy easy. Easy. i feel like we are like very close to dipping into like power scaling territory with this like are Elantria oh, yeah. magic powerful enough to stop a uh, like yeah, uh, yeah. hyper light kinetic projectile? <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, honestly, I, kind of. I, I feel like teleporting bombs got to be pretty easy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 just a, try point. you try you try to bomb them and they just teleport the bomb back. Yeah, to they your could ship. do that, couldn't they? Yeah, that's true. So so backing up a little bit with Cell, they have the Irie in some capacity, who've existed for a very long time, right? Like, they clearly are very knowledgeable that if they're able to create a device to, like, take over preservation, like, that that's kind of crazy that they just, they developed that, right? <laughs> it didn't it's work still great. extremely unclear to me how that was supposed to work, because I, it seems like it was just, like, purified door, but... Connection it, juice. It's not connection juice, apparently. We found out it's not connection juice. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But but regardless, they've been around for a long time. We don't know how the politics of Cell with, you know, like Raiden's Elantrians versus the Irie. Like, we we have no idea what they're like. It would be a little funny if, like, Irie was just in charge of the planet. Like, like a whole planet ruled by their version of the Illuminati. Yeah, (laughs) sure. Uh... But regardless, they have a lot of knowledge. K- kind of like the same reason that Nalthus, you know, they, they have a lot of Cosmere knowledge that that is helpful for them staying neutral, right? I mm-hmm. do think Cell probably gets its paws in things more. I don't know why it's a cat here. And it says pause. <laughs> but, <laughs> look, it's becoming alive. It doesn't need to be a human. Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, it can be a big cat. Um, Truly terrifying having a, having a cat, cat ascend. That sounds like a great idea. Um, let's, let's, let's get a story about that. So like we've, we've seen a lot of cellish magics on places at this stage in the Cosmere. Like it's, it's kind of been all over the place. Like we have Rhino, um a lot in you know lost metal of course yeah so i i can definitely see that maybe brandon seeding you know cell stuff to be more important right especially because we're actually gonna get cell sequels oh for for a planet where travel to and from is yeah, yes. famously difficult, <laughs> right? Shocking, shocking number of world hoppers. You know, maybe they just really use that teleportation. Compared, yeah, they're really compared good at it. to the planet that has like established custom system, and we well, have, like, you know, we the, see we see the 
Penelthian caravans and stuff. It's just That's like most of those people aren't important, right? We're just seeing the important yeah. Selish people. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> so I just wonder. I, I just wonder what their affiliation is. Like, it feels like they, well, they might not be neutral, you know? The, one of the main characters of this a launch for sequels is a member of the Ghost Bloods. Okay, fair point. Yeah, for sure. We what? Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah. Yeah. K Eyes. Yeah. Oh, Code names. Right, right, right. K Eyes is a yeah. main character in Elantris 2. Yeah, we actually knew that long before this battle <laughs> that Chaos was gonna be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There, yeah. I, I feel like between her and Shy, like seemingly maybe Cell is more associated with going to be associated with Skydrial moving forward. I, but hmm. I'm not idea. sure if I like basing the al- allegiance of an entire planet own like allegiance of like two individuals on it yeah. especially when they are ghost bloods we don't have any like indication of whether they are associated with their governments yeah no i i think ghost bloods are their own well like there's no way that i really like the ghost bloods zero percent they don't there's no way i, I mean granted do that did the irie figure out that kelsier did stuff there I, I think history. for narrative drama, yes, they did. Probably, eventually, and, right? Oh, I love... So, you've heard of love triangles, but consider a hate triangle <laughs> of Secret Hoid, oh. Kelsier, and the Irie. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Where you know, Hoid and the Irie clearly have antagonistic relationship. Hoid and Citrus. the Irie? Oh, trust. Since trust. oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Ooh, the sorceress that. clearly yeah, 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 did yeah, not yeah. like Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Uh, we know of, of Hoyt and Kelsier, and, and we know Kelsier and the Irie. That would be, wouldn't that be so funny if there was a story where Kelsier and Hoyt were forced to work together to stop the Irie? <laughs> that, would, that would actually be hilarious. I don't think that's going to happen, but that would be really funny. Because they really you know, hate I each other. If, what if, like space age cell is not like a united entity that's because very Brandon, like, it's put a lot of way like it's talked about those free empires what yeah. if it's like the planet just because we kind of assume that like space age the planets will be united but like we don't know that for sure yeah. maybe maybe the reasons maybe cell is like this one place that everyone knows is completely like disunited but you don't if you step in there you're gonna get destroyed yourself so like yeah messed up switzerland i mean you know uh, the the fjordel they wanted to conquer the whole world but i guess they redefined what the world was so you know hey they're not they're not exactly conquering the rose empire but you know maybe eventually they they get there they they are calling the rose empire rose barbarian so i wouldn't Yeah. I wouldn't they say they to. have like the perfect grasp on the world just yet. Yeah, I'm just saying by the space age, maybe they conquer the whole thing. You know, maybe. Mm. I don't know. You know what's really weird to think about? What's weird? You know how Elantrians are essentially immortal? Yeah. They're like they're functionally immortal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We can have a book where Rayodin and Galadon team up once again yeah absolutely yes abs- yes 100 that could absolutely. be era four like there's just a Rayodin galadon plot line back that could be just the thing right? I, I would genuinely love for Rayodin to show up like i know that Rayodin is not like the most favorite or most appreciated protagonist that brandon ever wrote but hey. i really like him i'd love to see more of him hey <laughs> some people's favorite ice cream is vanilla I think putting Raiden in a situation where there's a galactic cold war is a very interesting situation for a like a king to be in, right? Like that that is inherently interesting, especially yeah. when he's trying to do good things and all the options are bad. Yeah. There, there, there's a lot of mm-hmm. good storytelling options there. I would dig that. I don't know if we're getting that in Elantra sequels or other things. I somehow don't think the Elantra sequels will go all the way to like Space Age Cosmere. No, 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 no. But, yeah. you know, Brandon's he, he wants to do the Elantra sequels with the Skadrial stuff, right? So mm. I, I could see Cell and Skadrial being aligned. That's possible. Well, I think I think with the Elantra sequel specifically, they're going to be heavy like on Ghost Bloods and Ghost Blood recruitment of sure. uh, KIC. 
Sure. Um, Interesting. But I mean, that's just ever since ever since we learned that she's in the ghost bloods and he you know, wants to do them before Era Three. I've kind of thought like that makes sense. There's going to be some like heavy ghost blood thing in the Elantra sequels. But sure, sure, I could buy that. That's that's not a thought that I had had. I I think I kind of assumed that the Elantra sequels. Uh, we we don't know what the third one's going to be about, right? We know the no. second one is K. Eyes and 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 what's his like her brother. Yeah. Like but we don't know the third one. Uh, oh, Aiden, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce any of these. But that would be really <laughs> fun when we get to the Elantra sequels. Everyone's going to be so mad at all of us. But yeah, I, I, I think in my thought, I had imagined them like taking place fairly strictly, I mean, on cell, but also not like dealing with it. So like in, in my head, KIs gets recruited by the Ghostbloods off screen in the oh, same like way, way that... Later that shy gets recruited off screen right I sure see. i don't know well, i guess timeline wise it's possible the ghost bloods haven't been invented yet by the time you look <laughs> yeah right exactly it's, it's oh. but, right it's it's supposed to be like take like elantris was elantris like the second oldest story I like chronologically well, originally well, it's hard to, um, like it was supposed to be Brandon the oldest might have changed things but originally change things. Elantris was before era one yeah yeah so sells sells a big mystery so it's a good thing we're going to get some books as to to explore what the crap's going on there because so is also interesting because in in that quote that i read at the at the top of the episode from starling mm-hmm. she doesn't mention any sellish technology sure sure yeah that mm-hmm. that is a very good point um so hmm. Maybe, maybe another like point of circumstantial evidence for, hey, Cell is just living its best life, and it doesn't mess with other people, and other people don't mess with it. Either that, or we were wrong, and it's not Rashar that explodes; it is Cell. Oh man, that that, that would actually be pretty cool. But, uh, <laughs> uh but. Yeah, that is interesting. So maybe they don't have their own spaceships and stuff. Or they're just maybe more in the more background. They're, or maybe Selish spaceships are so specialized in using Elantrian magic that it's impossible to mimic it on like another ship. You can't buy it unless you're Elantrian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. It's like you know, it can only be worked by the Elantrian sort of thing. We know or, they can use, like, they do use spaceships because, like, the sorceress has the one. The sorceress yeah. has one, yeah. But we she could have bought it elsewhere, but, potentially. Like, yeah, and I, I believe we know, like, her ship has an awakened metal mind, so... Yeah, it's it's not so we point. don't know that, actually. We don't? Uh, no. It is, I, I think it's very reasonable to speculate that, but all we know is that there is an entity called Seslo uh, that is the machine's computer uh, that that appears to be sapient or sentient at least. Oh, okay, okay. No direct reference to it being an awakened metal mind. So it could, like, for example, be like uh, an Aeon. A Sion? Yeah, I think. Seslo, yeah, Sion. Um, Seslo made me think of an Aeon at first, but I don't think there is an, like, I don't think the name, let me, let me spell this out. Seslo, yeah, there's no Aeon that, mm. because for right. Aeons, it's you need two, two vowels. vowels and a consonant. Yeah. And there's right. no two vowels that are that are separated only yeah. by a single consonant in there. Hmm. Could be a Skazi. Oh, yeah. Skazi. The Skazi? Oh, yeah. Skazi. The Skazi. Could Love be, the yeah. Yeah. Or maybe maybe by the space age, Elantrians have finally figured out how their net, how their language works, and they're no longer bound by. But, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Put your comments below if you remember the Skazy S K. Everyone remembers the Skazy. Everyone, everyone, put your comments below if you remember the Skazy for me, because <laughs> I know we haven't talked about them on the podcast for a long ass time. Everyone knows the Skazy. Oh, that was so good in the or, or anniversary. the Skaze. That was good. No, Brandon Prance is a Skazy. He does. he does. Y- yes, but but uh non insignificant number of fans say skaze. So uh in an effort to sure. convey your question to the audience sure. better, I am providing an alternative. Okay. Look, I mean I don't pronounce Dominion's vessel as skay. I know Brandon does. 
I'll pronounce yeah, it a little bit scazy, but it's sky in my opinion. Like that's what it looks like. I'm not pronouncing it skay. Sorry. Yeah. You're not pronouncing yeah. shy shay either. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. We don't need to, we Brent, don't need Brent. to get in this. Um other planets. There's a lot of other planets, actually. Let's so for I'm thinking about like Frenody, because yeah. we know there is at least one like prominent space faring organization from Frenody. Yep. Hmm? Night Brigade. <laughs> ah, okay. I was I was wondering what Argent was doing with <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh yeah, but we like do we know like is is the night brig what kind of prominence the night brigade has on their own homeworld? Does it have any kind of prominence on, on their, their homeworld? Home like, home well, we know that the say. admiral is the same admiral as the one yeah. from the novel. Right, but is it is it like the case of like this is a group of people who left and they've become someone else's problem, or on the other side of the spectrum, is? Is Frenody like basically privately owned by the Night Brigade at this point? I think they are not related to whatever Threnodite governments, if they exist, because Threnody is not very nice. Um, I don't think that they are related to any official entity on Threnody. Yeah, and I also I also think that like we are introduced to them as them being mercenaries. Yeah. Like, it is possible that they are, oh, we are actually, you know, we are the government or we work for the government or we are the shadow government. But like externally, we present as mercenaries. But that is not the image that uh, that comes to my mind when Brandon says, oh, they are a mercenary group. It's so it's not the image, but the vibe of the lawless planet that's like shadow run by the scary mercenary group for Threnody is very fun. I I just think their goals are so much bigger than Threnody. Yeah. Right? What is what is like why bother ruling this literal hellscape, right? When your stated objective is the hunting of the don or at you know a don shard or the don shard. Right. Even greater <laughs> goals. <laughs> So, to yeah. keep something in mind, it's the fact is that they do use shades like a lot. Like this is like their thing. So they need it. You kind of need to be Frenodite or like from one of like the Frenodite descended planets, like Canticle, to be able to like leave a shade behind in the first place. So they need to have some. At the very least, they need to be running like recruitment on Frenody, I imagine. Sure. Yeah, See, fair enough. I don't know how much of a... How do I describe this? If the Admiral is the original Admiral from the novel, I don't know if the Night Brigade is like... I... I I feel like they might be just a group of people, not something that, not, not a group that like continuously recruits and and refreshes their ranks. I, I think the original Night Brigade might be the Night Brigade that we see, might be the Night Brigade that we will see in the future. Like, just the dead ones are like, the shades. Like think, think Bridge Four and not <laughs> the Cobalt Guard. Yeah, I, I don't really understand the Bridge 4 versus Cobalt Guard comparison. Sure. So Bridge 4 is, generally speaking, the same group of people. I mean, we and do have when... new people joining in in later books. <laughs> Individuals, but they're not, you know, they're not like the Order of the Windrunners, which is like this like continuation of tradition and membership and stuff like that for the most part the og bridge four is the bridge four that we're going to have until the very end unless bridge four becomes something like the order of the windrunners or the cobalt guard which is like you know does that make sense i, I, I think don't yeah. know if we need to go next <laughs> okay it, it does make more sense now yes yeah okay google grace grace yeah, it just feels odd to me that 
the original Night Brigade would have had needed to have enough members to like sustain the current mercenary population and all the shades they command potentially. It just like the idea that it's I'm not I'm not doubting that it's necessary like it's entirely possible it is the same group. It just feels weird to me that it's like they're starting with enough members and there are enough members still alive that it still has the healthy enough population to work as the mercenary group today in the space age. But we don't know how many of them were there or are there. I'm kind of with Grace on this one. I do think they would have to run recruitment. Either they are running recruitment or they've become their own like cultural like they've settled somewhere and like they are having children that are joining the night brigade. Yeah, I don't think they've settled. I disagree. But yeah, I, that, I, I that, think that's they just like get some more people over centuries. Sure. I, I I think they might be recruiting like individuals. I don't think they have like an HQ where they do things. It's, it's I know we've talked about this on the show, but who has enough money to hire the Night, Br- Night Brigade to do freaking anything? Like that's such an abs- what for for the low price of a shard yeah, you can hire like, us. Like it, it just doesn't seem like a good business model. That's what I'm saying, right? Like they have they got a lot of people. I guess a lot of them are shades. They're they're fine. Uh, I don't know. I do wonder if I do wonder if they are like normally like associated with uh with one of like those big governments like skadriel or roshar yeah man that'd be crazy like and they're just pursuing the dawn shard like on their own time because like there is i don't i can't remember any specific like historical examples right now but i do believe there's been like historical cases of like rulers hiring outside mercenaries oh, to just absolutely yes absolutely fight for them yeah like carthaginians so, did that yeah for sure yeah mm-hmm. like maybe maybe this is like this kind of case that they are like an external army hired by one of the superpowers cell hires the night brigade to do its bidding and cells just like we're behind a plasma storm what are you gonna do about us <laughs> maybe I Maybe they're like a convenient like smokescreen because like the night brigade is going around doing things, but who funds them is like yeah, could, that yeah. could be a question. God, I want to know. I mean, we we don't know how much they typically charge. We've only seen them during their specific dawn shard hunts. True. We don't know. Like, I mean, they're so powerful. Maybe it's like oh, a extremely valuable and rare awakened metal mind in exchange for like taking 15 minutes to destroy this planet or whatever like yeah the fact that they have planetary like they have orbital weapons is just insane to me especially because some that man isn't as late as some of these other things yeah it's crazy maybe 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 they work for nalfians as like if nalf is if we assume that nalf is some kind of rich tech powerhouse maybe (laughs) they are hiring like the night brigade to fight the wars for them yeah we don't want these guys to come over to nalthus can you like use your shades and just like murder them all I'm like yeah i got you money we got Were lots they... of money in breath got it i think i think the time either the time tellers were apprehensive of the night brigade or the night brigade were dismissive of the Skadrians on Canteco. I, I think there was a little bit of... Uh, I, I, I was just that. looking at this. Um, yeah, so the sergeant's asking, I did find something fun. Skadrian ship embedded here, doing science. They had him and didn't report it to us, or even send an amiable greeting. Rude, don't you think? The admiral replies, very rude. Maybe... We should pay them a visit to see what they know. Um, I guess we can scratch Skadrians off the list of yeah. potential backers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. And then the Admiral says, yes, we'll proceed with the Skadrians. They will have recordings. We'll find those far more reliable than accounts from a bunch of backwater peasants anyway. I have a feeling he's one step ahead of us again. How does he do it? Um, so, yeah, okay. Uh... I don't know, man. These these guys just seem like these 
always feel like the people the exact people Kelsey is worried about, like there are organizations, they'll just destroy us instantly. That's these guys. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Who's funding them? Yeah, I mean, I don't know the the um, quote where they're called mercenaries off the top of my head, mm, but it yeah. could be an instance of like, mercenaries is a polite term for something closer to space pirates, maybe? Uh, like, yeah, that's fair. You know. I don't think that was the case. Maybe they run like a protection racket across the Cosmere. No, I, I think I think they are like I think Nomad pretty okay. like yeah. straightforwardly calls them. All right, all right, I, f- I found it. Uh, the Night Brigade commands armies of the dead, he said, presumably Nomad. Uh, they're largely a mercenary force known for their brutal efficiency. They're the only army I know that makes you keep on fighting after you've died. They're not sympathetic to the problems of local people, to put it mildly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and there is also the kind of the black company inspiration, which is yeah. also quite literally a mercenary group. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but Threnody as a whole, yeah, probably the Night Brigade is the main Threnody stuff. Because I, I can't <laughs> imagine, <laughs> given what we've heard about the evil from solid man uh i don't think we're gonna have a big wild wide scale government a uh, big nation state on threnody mm-hmm. right like seem bad but you, you don't, don't you don't think you don't think the evil runs a uh, representational <laughs> parliamentary government oh geez Elian. <laughs> yeah that that's their mysterious motivations that no one wants it's, it's really just democracy <laughs> that's what they're interested in <laughs> what does it mean how but Every, ev- every, everyone vote. Like, how does that evil? What does that mean? <laughs> the ev- the, the giant chunks well, of investiture are many more than a single vote. Come on. <laughs> no, this. you no, you can't. You can't. Uh, yeah. Great. Cons- consider this. What if there is a sequence in the future where Nightblood goes to Trinity and destroys the evil? And destroys evil. Nightblood solves all the Cosmere problems. Kills all <laughs> Cosmere villains. <laughs> Easy. Uh, the whole and the whole th- uh, thing. Yeah, that's like, that's the that's the whole command. Destroy yeah. evil. True. We have the evil. I think that this is a foreshadowing. I think that that's yeah. Nightblood's real destiny. Is to Shashara was visionary. Destroy. Yeah. 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 Shashara's vision, the return vision, was of the evil destroying uh, yeah. the Cosmere and created Nightblood with the intent to destroy evil to stop yeah. that. Yeah. It does. Yeah. So everyone's scared of shades, right? So they're scared of the night brigade. Cool. Um, yeah, that's 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 fun. I do kind of wonder, like, if if Frenody like didn't manage to get rid of the evil problem, how did the night brigade get the resources to to go into space in the first place? You know. How that happened and how OG Zellian did the things he did is a great mystery for another time that I would love fair, to fair know. Enough, fair <laughs> like, I mean, great question, for sure. I think these are all Karen's problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, any other Serenity thoughts, guys? One thought that I that I don't think I can take anywhere, but has been interesting for me, uh, to me for years, is kind of the idea. So in secret history, right? Secret history, way early in the timeline oh, of, the, of the Grand Cosmere ah, timeline, yes. right? Uh-huh. We do have the Irie, one, concerned about shades in the, or right next to the Scadrian Sebastro. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two, having a Fabriel that can detect shades that's interesting and so i don't know what that necessarily means other than the obvious things such as well shades have been a factor on the cosmere scale for a long time and they are not limited to uh the threnodites of astral um Mm, sure but it is it is interesting to like keep in mind that they are apparently dangerous even to someone as powerful as the Irie. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. I thought you were going to go with the Irie line of, oh, Threnody wants to be on the like wider scale, right? Like That's what they said. 
something like that that they want to be on like the grand stage again <sighs> do they say that they said something like that I that, don't remember, I don't remember. that because they 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 like just thought that whatever Kelsier was was a Threnodite thing, right? And mm. and so yeah, they but thought, that was yeah. that was before they like so like they were they were going oh our shades Fabrio was being weird. Like you, you might be right, they may have made an offhand mention. They, they did they did make an offhand mention, but and like yeah, obviously it wasn't Threnody, but. It's interesting that they worried about Threnody being more Cosmere aware, mm. right? And maybe the Night Brigade is eventually that result. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I can see right. that. And granted, terrifying. So, you know, you should be concerned about that. So fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's um, terribly... Hmm. You take it, sir. It's, it's terribly on brand for the planet that is like has the evil and the shades to also be the one that exported the night brigade into the cosmere uh, you know yeah. there's a theme going on here right yeah it's like man. some some people some people some people's trade goods uh like export the trade goods include like wheat and fabrios and potatoes we we export death we <laughs> Hey, one of the shades or one of the ten deaths, guys. <laughs> no, 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 don't get into that. No, no, don't get on to that. Take it, okay. No, take it back. Take it back. Okay, okay. Um, and the other, the other interesting oh, things okay. is that Naz yes. in the Lost Metal uh-huh. broadsheets, Bands of Morning broadsheets. Oh, Bands of Morning, Bands of Morning. Yes, Bands of Morning. Uh, he does have a, shade a shades gun. gun. That's a hell, true. A hell gun. Yes. Uh, so the ability to weaponize shades is not necessarily a space age thing. It it certainly exists as of era two. It feels like one of those things that like, yeah, maybe you can weaponize it, but maybe it's a really bad idea until you have a lot more technology and can really handle it well. <laughs> Those shades that the Night Brigade look very well behaved. It's they great. did, yes, yes, yes. And I mean, it is it is notable that in the Isles of the Ember Dark, the version of Naz that we see yeah. is, you know, he's just a guy. He's just a guy. Yeah, you know, a guy that can presumably walk through walls and stuff, but you know, not murderous at all. Kind of, he's just himself. Yeah. All right. Wonder why that is, but. Anyway, maybe those like proper rituals. He yeah, the right Ooh, the proper history. rituals. Yes. Yeah. That, that line that drives us insane every freaking time. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, your offhand lines in Cosmere Aware stories. It really gets <laughs> drives us mad for decades. Um, not quite a decade yet. Cool. Uh, well, maybe let's touch on Daughtry a bit, the Aether homeworld, uh, which normally like wouldn't be on my mind. But you read the thing about the three different texts that, you know, this is one of the places that you can have a, a fully functional spaceship w- without yeah. other pieces. Right. Like you yep. can have Rosharan, you can have Skadrian, and you can have Datri. And specifically, Datri and Aethers for providing thrust and engine power yeah. is what the dynamic uses. Sure. Uh, but but they have their own fully, like, their own strain or strain of, of spaceships. Yeah. And I mean, mm-hmm. we don't know anything about them, but like, it does make it seem like they're a very important power in. Well, we uh, we know they don't have a perpendicularity on their planet, which mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just very interesting to me, knowing yeah. that they do have these like FT these at like FTL spaceships potentially. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know what it means. I just think it's interesting that they were almost forced to develop. I guess in a way, like the fact that they're so technologically advanced with presumably very little trade with other planets is interesting to me yeah yeah it is interesting and it's it it also paints perpendicularities as kind of a a uniquely shardic thing i would assume right so 
if the aether home world doesn't have a perpendicularity i i feel like no other because we know the aethers have spread around the cosmere right mm -hmm. presumably no other place where aethers have settled has a purpose so like presumably uh, perpendicularity is just not a thing that point of order the line is unfortunately Dotri didn't have a perpendicularity anymore right so anymore. like that that so they could have had a lot of influence and more recent events have cut it off in the last century that is possible even. so i mean we do, we do know from the lost metal that there was some kind of like magic ether divine conflict going on on that tree mm -hmm. the dark ether the dark yeah, the ether. Dark, the dark... <laughs> yes yeah 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 i mean the, like we, for, we know so little know, yeah, there, there could have been a shard there, one that is sympathetic to the Aethers, and they could have noped out. That's insane to maybe, think about. Yeah, maybe. Po very possibly. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, that, that also reminds me, because we know it's not just that there is one guy from that tree that's working with the ghost bloods. He is like a royal from that planet, for yeah, one. Yeah, that's true, yeah. The and he courts. also, like... Yeah. has the backing of one of the 12 ethers of that tree. Yeah. So it seems like the that tree, like political powers are working with the ghost bloods. Uh, Twin So could be a rogue agent. A yeah. So like, in, in other words, the fact that he is a Raj of the Coriander Court doesn't mean that he represents the Coriander Court in... Isn't Raj like court. the king? sure that doesn't mean that like he he could have noped out of that world well, he could have been disposed or something we don't know and uh, seeking shelter with the ghost but still like he's we know that like his ether one of like the, tw the 12 big ones yeah, is yeah. like with yeah him the, on this. the prime or primal eight. yes yes my home but, but, but that but that only means that he is like connected to the the big daddy of rosite yeah not necessarily like, the political I, I, groups. I do, but like that, that is like the divine endorsement. So yeah, but it. okay, I, I have the quote. So my homeland is inhospitable to my kind for now. I joined Lord Kelsier for the opportunity to gain allies and resources for my eventual fight against the Dark Aether. And having this planet remain safe and uncorrupted is a worthy goal on its own. So th this does make it seem like yeah, he could have had, like, he obviously did have political sway at some point, right? But that is not present. Right. Right. And by, like, what does he mean by my kind at this point? I would assume like, Aetherbound, personally. Either Aetherbound or Zephyr Aetherbound specifically. Uh, not Zephyr, but... Uh, Rosite. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, like, maybe, yeah. So, yeah, could could be all Aetherbound, potentially. And the Dark Aether is, like... Yeah, it, it could be like the Dark Aether has taken over the home world yeah. in in this period of the timeline. And so all others would have had to know. I, I have another stupid theory that's Great. not actually a theory, but speculation. Good. What if we were talking before about what if there was a shard in residence? What if the Dark Aether is like how he understands like a shard that barged in? I think at this stage he would know the difference, yeah. given his ghost. Like he's been in the ghost for so long, he 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 obviously knows what autonomy is, and he would understand shards. So and, and he he is an aether bound himself. Like he would probably know if something else is not an aether to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I was just thinking about like how on, uh, was it on Lumar or elsewhere they were like speculating about another type of ether that was actually yeah. white sand and i do think like a shard could maybe create something like an aether and may maybe mm. like that like maybe they don't know exactly what it is potentially like that that all of that's maybe. possible right maybe yeah maybe yeah we really want to autonomy <laughs> no yeah yeah we really don't know much about what's going on there it's so, actually trail 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 is the dark aether the it's foreman, kind of fascinating the foreman, personally yeah the, for, the yeah himself yeah no, yeah, yeah yeah obviously it's it's kind of fascinating how we have so much like subtle influence from that tree throughout like the most recent cosmere books yeah 
but no actual appearance from the planet itself. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like it. It makes the world seem bigger because I feel like for the longest time we're like, well, it's Cell, Skadriel, uh, Nalthus, and Roshar, Roshar and yeah. that's it. Yeah. And like some Threnody, I guess. And so like expanding that out is nice. Uh, I know they said that there's a bunch of minor worlds as well in like Ember Dark, I think. That, you know, are also involved in this greater conflict. Right? Uh <laughs> Um, I don't remember that, but I remember Ki is talking about like mythos, or you know, Kelsey are mentioning mythos. Kelsey, and, Kelsey are ma- and mentioned mythos. We got Ki Max. is mentioning Biendal. Biendal, yeah, sure. Random places, yeah. Are we gonna get there? Probably yeah. not. I don't know. <laughs> um, but there's there's a bunch of other other places. Brand, whenever Brandon wants to write a random story in some other weird place. <laughs> He's just going to be like, OK, yeah, it's a new world. And like this, this is my cool off book that I'm going to write for like three months. And then cool. There you go. You got a book. Congrats. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's what he's going to do, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the grand apparatus, guys. I want to. I wanna, what's that? That's the what I want. The grand apparatus. The grand apparatus. Um, I think, friends, we are actually going to split this into two episodes. This is not how we originally thought that this was going to be split at all. Not. Literally not even a little bit uh, because we were originally going to do like planets and then tech, but then we immediately talked about awakened metal mines. Given given who's on this on this episode, the descent into tech discourse was inevitable. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. So (laughs) we're going to leave it here. We're going to talk about shards, factions and other tech for next time. And so Yay. I think let's get on over to who's that Cosmere character. If I, if I say it, the, the people are cringing about how crazy I say it. Good. Who's that Cosmere <laughs> We really need to pad more time here. All right. <laughs> Characters from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Call. All right, Grace. Give it to us. <laughs> All right, everyone. You know how the game is played. You send an email to WTCC at 17short.com with five char- clues and the character that those clues correspond to. I read each clue aloud, and after each one, our panelists have the chance to guess who's that Cosmere character. Let's begin. All right, this one that we're doing was sent in by Anna. Hi, Anna. Uh, who is uh, Aluvara on the Discord. Nice. Clue one. This character is an antagonist. Moash. It's not Moash. K- Kelsier. It's not Kelsier. How dare you. Race. <laughs> it is not race. Clue two. This character dies off screen. Mm. Eli? It is not Eli. She's alive. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking of uh 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 Oh, that yeah, one. Still. Yeah, still. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? It's like, what are you talking about? Now? That was my mask. That was yeah, my, yeah, my, my okay, mouse okay. mask. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was like a shard plate thing. I'm like, what, oh, what is happening? Okay. I, I can know. see that. Yeah. Uh, antagonist that dies off screen. Mm. Aiden knows you. It's not Aiden knows you. <laughs> <laughs> Making some assumptions Making there. Hard oh. stance on Dragon Steel there. Gotta, <laughs> yes. gotta swing boldly oh, where man. no one has swung before. Who died off screen? Well, it's got to be like a minor antagonist. I feel like not like a major antagonist. Grace, I assume this is a confirmed death, not someone that like that's presumed death. Uh yes, definitely. Okay. Wow. You gave us you gave us something. That's nice. Yeah. I, I figure they'll start very low. 
Let's go with Governor Innate from Shadows of Self. Who's not Governor Innate? Who was wow, dead okay. the whole time. <laughs> that That's true. That's true. I, is he an antagonist? I don't know. He's dead. But I mean, he was kind of douchey, right? Yeah, I mean, he wasn't great. <laughs> For sure. Cool. This character looks noticeably different from others in their where they are. Died off screen. Noticeably different mm. from where they are. What does that mean? This one's hard. I feel like. Yeah. I don't remember the appearance, but like Rayodan's dad. That's what I was thinking too. But, but King uh, Iodon? Oh, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't say he's like different. Yeah, before Clue yeah, 3. That's, guess, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm going to go yeah, with. Yeah. It is not King Iodon. Okay. Uh, but what if it is Diloph? It is not Diloph. He died on screen, didn't he? Uh, I wasn't sure. I, I thought maybe he like like uh Hrathen left him to like choke to death or something and it's, then he left. It's really just like killing me inside that I'm like, what a intact like usually we just kill him on screen though, right? Like what right. Right? Hmm. So I'm just like uh, uh, what? What if that clue is really not a clue because the Casimir takes place on page and not on screen? Oh, pff. boo. <laughs> um, boo, boo, boo. Oh, but you died on screen. All the things like, yeah, 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 just die on screen. Ah! Um, I don't know, Shashara. <laughs> it is not Shara. It's such a bad bet. Whatever. Four. This character is very demanding. Well, that's there goes my not, blue fingers guess. That's not helpful at all. Uh, Shalon's mom. It is not Shalon's mom. <laughs> Bold, like, I thought I was swinging hard with Aiden Alcium, but you were like, hey, Shalon's mom, she's an antagonist. I mean, she did try to murder her own daughter, so that's like... That's a fair yeah, point, Shalons that's a fair point. She is an antagonist. Okay, but we've all tried to kill our children. <laughs> that's why you don't Should have I any currently. about the fact that well, you don't no, it's have because children? because I was successful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you try to kill your kids and you succeed, okay. didn't that mean you still tried? <laughs> you just succeeded? If you think, if you think about so, it. Also, we are talking about antagonist and not villain. That's true. So she is an antagonist to Shalom. Yeah. Okay, fair. I will grant you that. I, I just think every murder is an attempted murder. It's just uh, the attempt worked. The, the, the attempt was successful. You know, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Good what talk. is murder? <laughs> Good talk, guys. <laughs> okay. So it's not going to be Theopolis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um... Silence's grandmother, the shade, that one. It is not Silence's grandmother. I don't think she's an antagonist, but she died I off mean, screen, and you know what? <laughs> That's what I'm going with here. I mean, she does look very different from everyone else in the <laughs> end. That's true. I wasn't thinking about that, but that's true. Uh, which world do I want to go to? Mm. Uh, Yuri, Rira. Uh, well, it, today it's more like Threnody, Teldane. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Watch it be some stupid White Sand character. Some stupid, yeah. Uh, antagonist looks very different from other people where they are. Died off screen. Demanding. What was the last one? Demanding. Very demanding. Very demanding. Uh, Shayor. It is Shayor. Who the hell is Shayor? Shayor is the Elantrian with the blonde wig who's a little oh, girl. Yeah, who, yeah, 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 yeah. She uh, died? Uh, the final... Yeah. Her, yeah they, her, her, her men murdered her and presented her torn off wig to Raiden as a sign of loyalty. 
I forgot that this is what happens yeah, in the Yeah, because there are the three country. gangs. This is one of the three yep. gang leaders. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I forgot uh, the that this small girl is... gets torn apart in this book. <laughs> the final clue is that this character uh, started a religion. Or, I guess, was worshipped, but... Oh, that's... I don't know that she necessarily... To me. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Look, Evgeny, props to you, buddy. <laughs> like, that's... Bro. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that one. I, I don't think I would ever remember that. Cool. Let's um go to our who's that cosmic character priority queue, which uh, I do need more of these. By the way, uh, I'm getting a little low, so give me a bunch, and then I'll use those for the next year. <laughs> but you know, you 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 can submit some if you're a herald on our Patreon. Um, you can also you you don't have to be a herald on our Patreon to get our outtakes. And we we have it's not even an outtake. It, this was just the pre-show that I was recording, yeah, where we right. were just blabbing, and then we 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 had a good discussion, <laughs> and then we realized it was off the record, and then we started recording, and we did it all over again. Well, partially, uh, but yeah. So you can watch that, but you can also submit uh characters that we'll read sooner, and that's our, the priority queue and. I, I know I'm selling it real well. So this one is sent by Evelyn Basham. Oh, hello, Evelyn. Evelyn. Clue one. This character makes friends easily. Raiden. Not Raiden. That would be really funny. Adolin. Not Adolin. That's a great guess. Sil? Not Sil. I like that too. Clue two. This character is a good oh. negotiator. Uh, oh God. Let's see I'm how many Elantrian characters I can guess. Uh, Duke Telraii. No, it's not Telraii. Was he actually good at that? It's, I don't know. I mean, he was kind of a politician. Yeah, he was but like a bad one. Greasing, greasing some elbows. I guess. Um, Sebariel? Ooh, I like that too, but it's not Sabariel. Um, let's see. That's easily good negotiation. I'm gonna go with um, King Nohadon. Ooh, damn. Okay, it's not King Nohadon though, but that's pretty good. I like that. I just recently read the scene where he negotiates for wheat, and the guy is like, "Oh, you're a great negotiator." <laughs> That's sure, pretty good. that scene. I believe that that scene exists. <laughs> yeah, it's the Oathbringer one where they're, they're, they're walking. Yeah. Um, clue three. This character has been known to make risky bets. Not Risen. Okay. But her Babsk, whose name I can't remember. Vistim? Vistim. Yeah, Vistim. Not him. God, you know, this sounds exactly. I know I've talked before about like characters from other games, like pl I play, but this sounds exactly like character from another game I'm playing right now, okay. and it is taking all my willpower not to just throw. Hmm? Which game? Honkai Star Rail. Okay, yeah. there's is a the, guy is there. The Kitty Topaz. And no, it's actually her coworker Aventurine. <gasps> I am sorry, I mistake the two of them. I mis mistook. Okay. Awesome. Why isn't mistook? Mistook has to be a word, right? I think mistook is a word. I, I definitely saw mistook before. Yeah, that's a word. Anyway, yes, it, it was taking all my willpower not to immediately go to Aventurine because oh. he fits to a T. <laughs> nice, nice. And now he's like crowding okay. my brain and not letting me think I of Cosmere characters. I'm trying to think of what the name... I swear it's someone on the wind's pleasure. Okay. But I don't know what character it would be. Just but like, these these clues vaguely feel like someone like there's some connection where I'm like, I feel like there's a wind's pleasure character who is described as like open. It's I'm not just gonna open. throw it. There's like three named characters on the wind's pleasure. <laughs> and one of them is Shaw. <laughs> hey, Yasna was there for partially uh, yes. <laughs> later. True, true, fair, fair. It's four. There's like the captain, yeah. his wife. Do you, do you remember the Yalb. captain's name? I remember the captain's name. I mean, I'll go with I'll go with Captain Yalb. 
I don't think no, he's not. No, he's not. not Yalb is not the captain. Oh, Yalb. I'll go with Yalb. I mean, it's not Yalb. Oh, I was like, I don't think I. Captain Yalb, that would be great. I would, I would want Captain Yalb. Spoilers for Book Seven. Yeah, that'd be great. (laughs) He's one of the sailors on the Infinite Sea, obviously. (laughs) Oh, that'd be pretty tight, actually. (laughs) Clue four: This character has fought an Awakener. Wild. Is it like Denf? It's not Denf. Who likes to take? Makes friends easily. Negotiator. For an awakener. Am I missing a clue or are we in three? Uh, um, we're in four. Makes yeah, friends easily. Risky that, that, bets. Ah, uh, good defense. negotiator, risky bets, fought an awakener. Sa. It's not Sa. I like that. On the many, many assumptions that I made. Blush Weaver. It's not Blush Weaver. Clue five. The Vena has done something to disappoint this character. Is it Parlin? It's not Parlin. Wild. Absolutely wild. <laughs> You're like, who does this even mean? Denth. It's not Denth. Rosar did guess Denth last time, but oh, it's yeah, still wait. not Denth. No. I, I thought that was for the previous. No. 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 Athena has done something to disappoint Yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably, it's probably King Idris. Ooh. I, I was thinking that, but I don't know that he's friendly. Or makes friends with think, him? Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I don't think that applies to him. No. He's a great negotiator. He traded his daughter for something. Yeah. Well, peace, I believe, was the... Um... Yeah, I guess it's peace. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what should be, like, one of those weird, like, when, when Vivana goes on her little, like, city tour to speak to, like, the miners and the Mm. Other people in the cavern, like the the low lives, mm. the poor mm-hmm. people. Yes. Like what should be mm-hmm. like one named character who is like? I would say it's a. It, uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's a character you've heard of for sure. You know their name, one hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's just down to me, isn't it? I'm the only one who hasn't guessed. It is. It is. You guess don't fall. Might give people a bonus guess. You want? Savannah is interacted with five people. Adolin? Not Adolin. I think we had, that was already guessed, so yeah. I'm, I'm fine just saying no again. I'm going to guess Kaladin. You are correct, Grace. It is oh, Kaladin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. All right. So Evelyn said, can I make Kaladin one they can't get? Likely not. <laughs> Someone will just guess him early on. But I want to try. This one will be tough, I hope. Was uh, tough. Confirmed. It was tough. Yes. There's explanations <laughs> for every clue. So there you go. So, you know, he, Kaladin, he's friendly. I, I think that's fine. Clue two. He's not friendly, but he makes friends anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Calvin sure. has cut some pretty good deals throughout the story. Just think back to him buying supplies from the apothecary in Way of Kings. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Genny's reaction is amazing. This is very letter of the law kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it when it's Kaladin, I'll allow it, okay? Yeah. You know, like yeah. it sees the most main character of main characters, so you gotta <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> Clue three, uh Kaladin telling Bridge Four that he'd survive hanging upside down in the high storm was a risky bet. He even told Sil as much. Ooh, boy. I w- I will argue that there was zero risk to him. He didn't know that. If you reread Way of Kings. If if he had succeeded fantastic if that's a bet that he loses he's dead who cares well it's the highest risk because he dies then it's the riskiest but, bet you can make your life but, but that was not under his control he was gonna get strung up anyway yeah uh, like if i if i 
am about to get like hanged or shot or like death row or stuff like that, I am going out with something like on the dawn of the of the third day, look upon the east and I will be there. I'm probably not going to be there because I'll be dead. But there's no risk to me saying that. <laughs> Uh, I don't agree. I think if Kaladin says it's a risky bet, then it's a risky bet. That's what I'm going with. Uh, clue four, he did. He fought Basher. That's that's a fact. We talked about he, that he earlier in the show. Yes. That's why. Yes. Yes. All right. That's, clue five. When the Venom made a deal with the Honor Spren to get to the perpendicularity, Kaladin was disappointed that she would be leaving them. That is yeah. also true. That is this, this, that is why I got it because I was like, <laughs> I but, guess I can justify the others, but like I was trying, I was like, because you just read Oathbringer. I you just read, just read that scene. Like that is the most recent scene that I read in Oathbringer, and it's all I could think about. I was uh, like, I can't think of any Warbreaker characters. Uh, Evelyn, you almost got us, this. but Grace was just reading Oathbringer and got you good. Damn, that was good. I like that. I think that's good. I thought for sure you weren't going to be able to get it. So that's crazy. All right. Thanks for watching. You can find us on 17 chartcom for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you could ever want. You can find us on social medias, maybe. I don't, I don't know if we post anything on anything Not, anymore. I mean, art on Twitter, just because that's easy. I mean, once our Twitter got hacked and we lost all our back, uh, our backlog, I lost a lot of interest in our Twitter, and especially given Twitter... Twitter. Also, the fact that Twitter has just continued going down. Just today, by the way, I saw a thing that uh, good old Muskie is replacing the heart icon with an X icon for liking Jesus. things. Jesus. Yes, because nothing says like, like, uh, like Xing out of your application. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Great. Good. Good. I like it. Uh, God, well, he's, he's so smart, though. He's so anyway, like, come on our Discord. That's where the news actually is. Uh, and uh, yeah, so yeah. See you next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bye, bye from from my from my cute gopher. Yeah, and from my gopher in a deep dish. You you, you can't tell, but I've actually done over two hundred episodes of this. You couldn't tell from that outro. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are experienced professionals everyone <laughs> professionals yes 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 bye bye oh.